Край зв'язок на обірвається. Даш сигнал, коли можна починати. Окей, okay, let's start then. Today is lecture is called Nerf in 2023. Theory and practice. But before we start with Nerf, let's look at the simpler problem. Two dimensional images. How can you represent a two-dimensional image on a computer? We all know several ways to do that, like pixels, the most common one, vector graphics, or less common but still completely possible point cloud. Anything else? Yes. There are at least two different functional representations where an image can be represented with a mathematical function f of x and y. The first one is contour representation where f equals to zero is the implicit equation giving us some kind of contour. And the second one is the volumetric representation where the function f gives brightness or color of each single pixel with coordinates x, y, or maybe not pixel, but continuous point in space. But in order to do it in practice, we have to parameterize and learn the function f of x and y somehow. And of course, today is the year 23, and for many years already, we all know the answer to these questions. Neural networks can parameterize any function, at least in theory. There is one experiment which is not widely known in beginner's tutorial, but probably all people who really like deep learning tried this experiment at least once, and many came to the idea independently. To construct The experiment is to construct a small, fully connected neural network, also known as multi-layer perceptron, to predict the RGB color of a pixel. Function f of x and y is the RGB color of a pixel and train this neural network on a single image. Here the data set includes all pixels of an image, their coordinates and color, and we want the neural network to regress color from the coordinates. It's very important that the network is trained on a single image and represents a single image. Such network will not generalize to any other images in any ways. And if you do such experiment, typically you get something like that. We get something like where here is original image and here is rendered from the trained neural network. Of course, it looks pretty similar, but small details are missing and it looks kind of ugly, despite the fact that the neural network in question had tons of parameters more than pixels in the original image. Why is it so? There are two reasons. First, raw coordinates x, y are not a very good input for a neural network. And this is solved commonly by positional encoding. And second, ReLU is not a very good nonlinearity because it gives locally linear functions. And there are bad activation functions like Siren. And with these two improvements, you can easily get a realistic quality of encoding an image. But what about three-dimensional representations? Here it's more or less similar to 2D. You have point cloud, you have a mesh, a kind of special kind of vector graphics. You have voxels, three-dimensional pixels, also RGBD, which is not very interesting. But what about functional representation f of x, y, and z? Again, it's possible. And again, there are two versions of functional representation. Implicit surface f equal to zero gives us a truncated sine distance function or sine distance function family of methods, which we are not going to discuss much today. And the volumetric representation f equals to density of color is the main idea 
behind Nov. Nov belongs here, but for better rendering, they also add the viewing direction to input coordinates. There are several important links to under if you want to understand Nov, the original paper, very good. Uh, ECCV 22 tutorial with slides and and videos. And the recent NOF review article also from Autumn 22 and a list of awesome NOF papers. And a question, do you hear me? Everything's fine. Let's continue. Um, note that there are hundreds of NOF papers. It's obviously impossible to cover them all in one short lecture. I'll only cover very briefly, very ma uh, uh, main ideas and the ideas I like, very briefly. And of course, it's impossible for one person to know the entire NOF field, at least if you are not a full-time NOF researcher, which I am not, but probably even full-time researchers already had to specialize because there are hundreds of papers. So today, very brief introduction, very little information. Now let's look at NOF theory. As I said, NOF is a three-dimensional scene representation, which is volumetric. There are no surfaces anywhere in the formalism. You can think of it as continuous translucent voxels, sort of a 3D object made of colored glass. You can imagine like this, you know. And, but what is the lighting model? The vanilla NOF has light emission and absorption, but there is no scattering and no reflection whatsoever. So light is emitted by the model itself, each point of the model. There are no external lights like lamps and blenders or unity, nothing like that. No, each point of the model emits color light, which is direction dependent. And also the points are allowed to absorb light, but no scattering no reflection what happens when you train NOF, it freezes and freezing for some reason is called baked baking in the NOF world so it freezes or bakes lighting conditions that happened at the training time and once NOF is trained you cannot change the lighting let's look Create NOF as volumetric 3D scene representation. NOF is a small neural network. Input is five variables, X, X, Y, Z, and direction. And output is density sigma and color RGB. In practice, they use unit direction vector D instead of polar coordinates. And positional encodings are used instead of raw inputs. But how to render it? It's not enough to know representation. We have to know how to render a two-dimensional view of a 3D model. And in order to render, we need a camera definition with intrinsics and extrinsics. And each pixel of a camera becomes a ray going through the 3D scene. And the idea of NOF rendering is to evaluate the NOF function, now in neural networks, in a grid of point along the ray. It's volumetric with no surface and very importantly differentiable so that we can proper back propagate gradients through the rendering. Compare this to rendering of meshes which is not differentiable and it's very difficult to make it differentiable. For each ray, there is a rendering equation. The peak, the cell or ray color is given by integral of a contribution of L, all ray points T, where the integration limits are known as near plane and far plane. Sigma C, the neural network's output, and there is also transmittance T. Transmittance T is a so-called prob the probability of ray reaching point T, but it's a rendering slant. Actually, what it means, it's a fraction of light from the point T reaching the camera, which is 
given by an integral with sigma. In practice, integrals are replaced by sums of the points, and points are sampled the smart way, not uniform grid, but some kind of adaptive sampling. And you can also uh, estimate so-called expected depths. Which, which is the estimate of depth. If you have a good surface, it will give you a good depth estimate. But once again, north is volumetric. It has no surfaces in the formalism. So now we know how to represent a scene with north, but what is the problem solved by north? Actually, Many problems can be solved by NOV. It's a technique you can apply to different situations. But I'll tell of a mo the most common problem. The most common problem, how to train NOV and to create NOV. It's a generic three-dimensional reconstruction problem. Given a number of images, reconstruct the three-dimensional scene and camera poses. Traditionally, such a problem is addressed with traditional SFM and MVS pipelines implemented in OpenMVG plus OpenMVS called MAP and other software. A typical pipeline involves four steps. First step, SFM. Find safety points, their matches, and estimate camera poses and sparse point cloud. Step two, find dense point cloud from image pixels. Step three, calculate a mesh from the point cloud. Step four, texturize them or texture the mesh. And steps two to four are called multi-view stereo MVS. And NOF actually replaces these steps, two to four, the MVS problem. NOF does not solve SFM. You still need camera pauses, either ground truth, or if you don't have ground truth, you will have to run SFM like call map to get camera pauses. And the NOF training means training NOF for each scene. Just like for images, uh, training neural network for representing images here, one neural network represents one and strictly one 3D scene. NOF is trained for each scene separately and there is no pre-trained NOF. So to describe one scene, you have to train NOF. And the, this function gets the f gets trained as function of coordinate and direction. Inputs here to the training process are image and known poses. The problem is to synthesize all training view, analysis by synthesis, so-called. And the loss is photometric loss for each image between rendering and ground truth. So how it works? This is a p picture figure from original DOF papers. You try have input views with ground truth. You try to render them with NOF. Calculate photometric loss for each image, backpropagate the gradients, and train the neural networks. So eventually, it will predict you the images very similar to ground truth. That's how training works. Now, let's compare NOF to traditional mesh and texture based methods. I'll start with NOF advantages. Mesh involves multiple stage pipeline like point cloud mesh texture. NOF ideologically simple single stage training. Mesh has big issues with topology, as you might know. While NOF is volumetric, it has no topology. Mesh struggles to reproduce small 3D details. NOF has no problem with that. The then point four is tight in my opinion, lighting. NOF captures the lightning of the original scene, baked light, but it can represent non lambertial surfaces with peculiarities, reflections, and such. While meshes, uh, you can relight them with different lighting conditions, but they really struggle with peculiarities, reflections, non lambertian materials. So this is tight. And now 
the nerve cones, bad things about nerve alone, at least unfortunately. Nerve has very slow training and rendering, no standard nerve SYN file format, typically requires an NVIDIA GPU with CUDA, produces artifacts sometimes, strictly aesthetic scene with static lighting, nerve requires accurate camera poses, Models are not editable or composable or animatable or deformable. But the silver lining here is that for each of these bullet points, there have been attempts in literature to improve the situation with varying degree of success. And now let's look in more details on these limitations, how to overcome it, and various NOFs ideas and extensions. First, NOF requires static scene with static lighting. As I said, it can capture reflections and such, but only uh, under the original lighting condition. You cannot change lighting afterwards. Some people push the limits here. Ref NOF improved the lighting for new angles and reflections, but still assume static lighting. Some papers actually try to invent relighting NOF, relighted no, but it's not very easy. An influ very influential early paper here is NOF W or NOF in the wild. They considered outdoor scenes which have uh, transient objects such as posters and people which change from view to view of the same scene and also lighting conditions change like day and night. And so they did two things. First, excluded transient objects. And second, they implemented lighting changes between views by introducing latent variable for lighting and coding for each view. These ideas became standard and nowadays are used for many late and off implementations. There are many other good ideas. For example, using um, narrow cones instead of rays for each pixel for better quality became a standard idea. Some models used known depths or sparse point cloud as an extra supervision. Some models combined not with gain of rational autoencoder for various reasons. Modern nodes typically fine-tune camera poses via backpropagation because even if you have ground truth, camera poses usually they're not accurate enough. Learning from poses from scratch, however, is much harder problem. Some papers tried it, but still people mostly use call map, which works better. <laughs> Some papers added deformation fields for non-static scenes, just like NOVW used a latent variable for each image lighting conditions. They used the, another latent for deformation fields. And that's NOV is very famous paper, Hyper NOV and others. Some papers considered few short learning. The fact is that NOF cannot render what it did not see while training, and not even a single pixel. It never hallucinates anything, especially it will not hallucinate the backside. You need a lot of views from each side. And some papers wanted to overcome the limitation for few short learning. The idea is to learn NOF to hallucinate, basically. They used a things like pre-trained CNN in two dimensions to extract high-level image features like CNN backbone at some kind of 3D cost volume or 3D shape price, sometimes gains and a lot of techniques. Example is from Pixel Nerf paper. If you have three short learning, it's very few. There are too few shots and Nerf produces junk, but Pixel Nerf produces plausible hallucinations for new views. A very similar problem is not optimized for three reconstruction for either generic 3D objects or human bodies or human faces. 
No Falach outdoors since, apart from early paper in OFW, there have been a lot of later papers optimized either for street level views or for aerial drone capture. Next, we continue with limitations. Nerve scene is not reductionistic. It's more holistic, like a hologram. That's why there is no blender for nerve, and it never will be. It's simply not mathematically not possible. 3D meshes or point clouds uh, are reductionistic, and we are really used to it, and we often take it for granted without thinking, but it's a very important property. 3D meshes, you can compose, you can break apart the scene, you can move, delete, copy, paste, edit, resize, animate, whatever, individual parts and individual objects. You can also upsample, downsample the scene, you know, its parts. And that's exactly this reductionism, make Blender possible, make Unity Engine possible, make all traditional 3D graphics possible. But no scenes are not composable or breakable to parts. Again, it's holistic. Each neural network parameter applies to the whole scene. You cannot say this part of the neural network apply to the table, this part to the sofa. No, it doesn't work like this. All parameters describe the whole scene. It's a major new limitation, and I know of no radical solutions, although some attempts have been made. More on this later. The next limitation is more technical. Rendering of NERF models re always requires NERF software and is typically written on Python. Compare this to meshes. Meshes are rendered very efficiently on any GPU, even cheap GPU. Using low level shader protocols like OpenGL, Vulkan, and so on. Why is it so? Actually, it's not magical. It's a product of decades, uh, years, decades of hard work. GPU hardware, not only software, but hardware, have been specifically designed for this very task of mesh rendering for years and decades. That's why it's efficient. There are also standard 3D scene file formats, which you can generate in any 3D software and view with any 3D software. Compare this to NERF. NERF requires dedicated NERF software to render, usually in Python. It's strongly depends on the particular NERF model used. There is no universal NERF rendering. The, there is no NERF scene file format. It's a neural network unique to each con, a particular architecture, and it typically requires NVIDIA GPU with CUDA and not any kind of GPU. I find this a pretty major limitation. Now you can ask a question. If it's so hard to render a NERF, then can I extract a mesh or point cloud from NERF? The answer is yes, but there is a big but. It is based on crude approximations like TSDF. Naturally, there are no natural services in NERF. The whole idea of NERF is not about extracting meshes, but about rendering NERF with NERF rendering. And extracting meshes will result of lower quality than direct NERF rendering. Of course, the, it can be improved with some clever ideas like NERF with normals, which allows more accurate Poisson meshing. But uh, if you really want meshes from a NERF, what I can say, of course, in theory, you can use NERF in the middle of pipeline, like reconstruct a NERF scene first and then, and then convert it to meshes. But uh, if you want to do like this, ask yourself this question first. Sure. One, do I really understand what NERF is and how it works? And two, do I really ne need NERF in my pipeline? Because uh, converting NERF to meshes, it actually takes away most good things about NERF, in my opinion. Next section is trying to make NERF faster, because original NERF was very slow. Expect hours or days of training, minute rendering or something on a single GPU. The good news is that in this area, 
a tremendous progress has been made in the last two or three years. Great result achieved. Still, I never saw enough no, working not with quick Yuda. Why is no slow? Very simple arithmetics. Each rendered pixel is array. 2 million pixels for standard high, high full HD image, 2 million rays. Each race, 100 or more points, 256 in the original NOF paper. Cal calculate how many, and that's how many neural network inferences we have to do for each rendering like millions and millions, hundreds of millions. That's why NOF is not very fast. Authors of the original paper were fully aware of the problems. They designed two networks, coarse and fine, and did adaptive non-uniform sampling of points. Still, it was not enough. People wanted better methods. And more than fast enough methods are classified into baked or non-baked methods. No, it's not about baked lighting. I discussed earlier. It's different baking. The idea of baked method is the following. First, we train enough normally, then run the inference on a fixed grid, and the rendering don't run enough. We cheat. We, have, we just cache these values on a grid and interpolate the cached results on a grid. Naively, it would require five or six dimensional grid, which is intractable. But then people started to do one kind of clear idea. You use spherical harmonics to encode direction and use pairs grids like octrees in three dimension and uh, created baked methods which typically greater speeds up rendering of a trained model, but not training. More interesting methods are non-baked methods. Here his idea is kind of similar, but with two differences. First, you cache not the result of neural network, but some kind of intermediate features between the position and the final result. And second, they used uh, some very clever tricks. So this caching and interpolation is differentiable. So they can use exactly the same setup, not only at inference, but at training too. But, uh, and they achieved uh, good speed up. But the real breakthrough was NVIDIA Instant NGP, which uses hash table and some very difficult to understand technical tricks. It's also written on a low level CPU, CUDA, with absolutely zero chances to pull to port the code uh, to some other to non-NVIDIA hardware. It can be trained for something like one minute on a good GPU rough training and inference up to real time. However, the more than more those like North Factor achieve comparable speeds in pure PyTorch. So you don't have to rely on this NVIDIA dirty tricks. And some authors uh, went even further. They asked, do we need enough at all? Look at the baked methods. Baked methods are basically voxels, a three-dimensional grid with spherical harmonics, uh, but not enough. Can we optimize such representation directly? And the idea was to render like, like baked methods, rendering like a north with octrees and rays and so on, interpolation, but, but no neural network. And they tried it in papers like Planoxels and TensorF, and it did, it seemed to work and produce north like quality without any neural networks, just sophisticated voxel methods and kind of inspired by NERF. Next, let's ask a question. Is NERF used in commercial projects or products? Very few I currently know of. And now I want to show you something. By the way, is everything okay so far? Yes, let's let's try to see your vi there is this video. Growing up, I always loved spending lunar new year with my family. I draw and imagine the zodiac animals coming to life. As technology got better, my imagination grew bigger. 
celebrate with me as we go from the year of the tiger to the year of the rabbit with McDonald's. You can experience 3D art in your own living room. Scan the code to see for yourself. Happy Lunar New Year! It's a recent uh, McDonald's ad a few months ago, which was supposedly created using Nof, one of the very few commercial applications I saw. Nof is still strictly back end and mostly Linux, and strictly requires NVIDIA GPU with CUDA, maybe also GP GPU, but I didn't see any such models. There is no Nof on Edge devices, including common PC and Mac, which typically don't have CUDA. You could think that mobile NOF is an exception, but unfortunately, mobile NOF is not really NOF when rendering. They use NOF at trending, but what it actually renders is polygon-based. Once again, I remind that all GPUs are hardware-optimized for meshes, and, but not NOF, and it's not going to change anytime soon. There is no OpenGL or Vulkan for NOF, the way I like to put it. So far, we only considered the static multiple view stereo problem. Let's now look at how NOF can be used for other problems. For example, what about NOF for videos? Can we use NOF for videos or dynamic scenes? In principle, yes, simply add time to X, Y, Z. People try this. In practice, it doesn't work very well. It requires a lot of use and space and time, pretty dense. What we want are really sparse. We use typically a single moving camera. And the first paper which considered videos, as far as I know, was Dinov of numerous papers which came afterwards. Dinov decided to do like this. Look, our scene deforms from frame to frame. Let's train static Nov with no time, but add a time-dependent scene flow, the three-dimensional optical flow, encode it with another neural networks. And they tried this idea and got pretty good results. Nov is an deformable nerves use very similar approaches. And uh, there have been a lot of paper since then, often using depth or so 2D optical flow as guidance. For example, take the modern paper Nerf Player. It's a modern dynamic nerve which decomposes since semantically into three classes, uh, static, deformable, and new, like new object center in the scene. Original work was based on tensor F, so it was not really nerve. But I think nerve studio implementation is nerve factor based. And so we come back to the question, can we edit nerve scenes or not? I would say like this, if you by edit, you mean editing, really editing things like Blender, then no, and not possible. But uh, a lot of papers tried uh, a limited degree of editing, I can say. For example, you can do composable scenes, one enough per object or part of the scenes. That's what Giraffe did. You can also edit North Scene with two-dimensional image prompts in the form of sketches. That's edit North. It used graph-like object classes and shapes and a pre-trained network for them. A similar paper clip Nerf allows you to edit Nerf scenes with either text or image prompts, which is of course based on the pre-trained OpenAI clip. Somewhat related idea is to use now for 3D semantic segmentations or scene understanding used in a few papers. But probably the most beautiful NOF application for non-specialist is a 3D art generation or style transfer. There have been a number of papers. For example, Dream Fusion uses a trained two-dimensional 
diffusion models like ImageN or stable diffusion as a guidance for, tra for training a NOF scene from a text prompt. And since it's used trained 2D models as guide, then purists could say that it's not 3D enough, but, but in real life it's, it allows for pretty beautiful 3D generation and you can try it your dream fusion yourself in a Google collab. I did once. And another very recent paper is Roy specialized on creating 3D avatars from uh, one photo and text description. They use the trick to represent 3D spaces triplane two-dimensional features, and then they trained their own latent diffusion models on such representation. And what's new this year? When I, when I was writing this presentation, uh, Erkai found uh, almost 200 papers so far from the year 23, and now there are many, going to be many more. And they, and you have papers on all kinds of topics. So NOF is still a hot topic of research. You didn't stop. And of course, there are too many papers to discuss here, but you can look if you want. A couple of 23 papers were in this lecture. And now the final section of the lecture, NOF in practice. You can ask me, okay, I believe you now, NOF is cool, agreed, okay, but how do I use NOF? It's something very complicated, probably you need service or something. I'll tell you. The most user-friendly option is NOF Studio. But if you want to read the code and analyze the code, you can also try simpler codes like vanilla NOF implemented in PyTorch or other frameworks. So let's look at the NOF Studio. Install it and have fun. It strictly requires NVIDIA GPU. If you don't have NVIDIA GPU, you will have the only, your only chance is to find some kind of cloud or collab. And it strictly requires Linux or preferred or Windows, possibly. Installation of NOF Studio can be not very simple. First, it requires tiny QDNN from NVIDIA building from the source. And of course, on my Ubuntu, QDA uh, had a conflict with the latest GCC. I have to use GCC 10 and a lot of technical things, very common problem with QDA. And also it requires PyTorch 1, it's still incompatible with PyTorch 2. And I have to be very careful to install all dependencies by hand so that dependencies like FunTorch don't replace stupidly PyTorch by PyTorch 2. And But finally, I managed to do it. If you succeeded in installing your studio, congratulations. We can now try it. By the way, Docker is also possible if you cannot install it by yourself. And uh, once you install NOF Studio using it, it's very simple. Let's follow the docs and train our first model. And uh, we use common line interface scripts to download the poster scene and as download data and so on. Then we train the NOF factor model on this data. The full training took me about 40 minutes, but you can already see a scene in one minute. And tutorials suggest you to look at the scene while training, which in the web browser, which usually works, but sometimes you can run out of GPU RAM on all the GPUs. And the train scene looks like that. And it's, and it's rendering in the browser. Here we use an S viewer to view it. And before you start uh, screaming, oh my god, not in the browser, of course it's not in the browser in the front end sense. All rendering handles on my computer is a back end CUDA. Uh, CUDA on backend on my computer with browser as the front end on the same computer. And it has uh, several models, including Norfecto and the original instant NGP. You can try and does the mostly slower models. You can you can try to check them out if you want. 
and you can all once you train enough you can also specify a camera pass in this browser viewer and render a video this example of rendering a video i did on my computer you can also You can also export a point cloud or a textured mesh. As I said, it's not as good as enough rendering, I warned you. But how to train on your own data? If you look at the documentation, it says that if you don't have camera poses, you have to use call map for SFM or use data with known poses from records 3D, clearance, polycam, and so on. I tried the call map way, but not with my own images. I took the castle data set, which is like a hello world problem for SFM and then followed the instruction. I used an S process data, which is a no studio call map wrapper to process these images via call map. And then I tried to train, but it didn't work. Why? It only produced random clouds, no training. What's going on? I was not very happy, of course. But since then I learned that no typically trains pretty well. If NOF doesn't train at all, it means almost certainly that something is wrong with our scene geometry. For example, NOF often renders uh, most of the things only in minus one to plus one cube, and there are also near plane and far plane settings, and so on. If you have wrong scene geometry, no training. And uh, and uh, by default, if you use uh, default scene format, it uh, centers automatically. But for frontal scenes, automatic centering, like a center of all cameras, will be bad, very bad. That's why you need the option center method focus. When I put this option while training, I got a reasonably good training not perfect but you can see the castle of course open mvs can do it better i would say but at least no did something with a completely custom scene and uh, then i should say that no data comes in many formats no studio has several data parses for different formats no studio data is the default one which we use so far and blender data used for the legal scene that legal scene is a famous yellow bulldozer. We'll see it soon. Unfortunately, another scene uh, format used by original North like Fern scene is not supported. So where is the bulldozer? Here is the bulldozer. I tried the, this legal scene, it, and first it didn't work with no factor. I got some completely weird overfit, but no consistent 3D models. And once again, it was a scene geometry. And the loader for Blender scene doesn't have automatic resizing. And I have to adjust near and far plane. Now everything worked fine. I got the yellow bulldozer. That's my rendering from my computer. But, but, um, but now I have a question. Do you really need to tweak some options for every NOF scenes? Because to me, it seems like this, that NOF doesn't work automatically. For each scene, you have to tweak some parameters. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. And also, for Blender data, the viewer didn't work once I, I trained the model because of some stupid bug. And so far, we used common line interface, but actually, North Studio has a Python API. And that's a minimal example which does the complete training one gpu version complete training this includes even the viewer in a web browser it involves uh, high level uh, north studio api first we create a config for no factor model set uh, pass to our data and then from config we create trainer and we train very high level it also has lower level api models positional encodings renders and so on if you really want to understand how north studio works you have to go there to into lower level api but not today and now 
let's finish our lecture with a short conclusion. NOF is a very nice idea. NOF variance is a huge pool of new ideas. Hopefully, some of them will enter our everyday world and the history of computer science and will not be forgotten. However, for now, it's still not very practical and mostly PUDA based. And if you want to try and practice, NOF Studio is a relatively user-friendly modern NOF software. Still, it's not easy enough for non-specialists. Now I'm finished. Enjoy NOF and thank you for your attention.